everyone, thanks so much for being here. My name is Kat and I make housewife videos here on Good and Plenty. If you just so happen to absolutely love this video, please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All of these things help me grow my channel like a plant. Okay, so let's cut to the chase. Getting house plants can be extremely overwhelming and expensive because once you get a couple plants, you start to realize how many things you need just to have those plants. To help you out with that, I figured I would compile sort of like an essentials list of plant products that I think every beginner should kind of have and build up within their first year of having houseplants. A lot of these products are usually linked down below already in my description box, but I also figured this would be a good opportunity for me to actually talk about those products rather than just consistently linking to them. So yeah, there you go. Not included in this list will be equipment and fixtures like humidifiers and grow bulbs and also I'm not gonna really talk about household items that I use for plants mostly because that can be an entire other video so let's just jump into it the first three products I'm gonna talk about are soil essentials so I'm gonna start with the big boy the all-purpose potting soil which I sort of use as the base of whatever soil mixture I'm creating and I really favor black gold over brands like miracle grow and stuff like that I've been trying to upgrade my soil this year so I'll talk a little bit about that as I go through the other amendments but I find black gold to be kind of recommended a lot and I've had a lot of success with it and I notice a difference when I splurge and get a better brand like Black Gold over things like miracle Grow. I'm not really like a soil nerd, so I can really just talk about my experience with them and I have really positive things to say about Black Gold. And I get the all-purpose mix, but I know you can also kind of get like the fertilized mix. It's really up to you and what your fertilizing preferences are, but I get the all-purpose. Sometimes I do get the miracle Grow just because that's what Home Depot and Lowe's stock, so sometimes that's just the easiest thing for me to get but when I have a little bit of extra money and I have access to black gold I definitely prefer to get that next up when talking about soil we have to talk about amendments so the really basic amendment I think everybody should get is perlite or pumice I have perlite with me but this is actually the last bag of perlite I'm going to use I am switching to pumice for a couple different reasons maybe I can do a video about it but Perlite is still a great option. It's better than nothing and it's definitely more affordable. But there are a couple of bonuses to pumice that I want to explore and experiment with. And once I find the pumice brand that I'm happy with, I will add it to my links below. But for now, I do have my perlite link down below. Honestly, I'm really not that picky about what perlite I'm using. Perlite's perlite in my opinion. I don't really notice that much of a difference. Why do you want perlite? Well, it's going to add great aeration to that potting mix that we just talked about. That, even when it's catered to houseplants, is usually really heavy and you just, you just need to add some aeration and chunk to the soil. So perlite is definitely key to that. I would say if you're buying potting soil, you also also need to buy perlite they just go hand in hand there are a bunch of other amendments that you can add into the soil things like mosquito bits worm castings you know there's there's so many things that you can add but the last one that I'm gonna talk about just because I find it to be the easiest and this is a little bit of a bonus but I I do highly recommend purchasing it and that is a orchid bark mix you can just get straight up orchid bark but I do like this because it also has um has chunky peat, fir bark, charcoal, and coarse perlite. This is like a great way to add a bunch of different amendments with one purchase. I do mix it in all together with the all-purpose soil, perlite, and then this because there's honestly not a whole lot of perlite in here. Those three mixed together will give you a very decent basic soil that you can use for basically all of your house plants. You can kind of just tweak the measurements for what kind of plant you are potting up. Those are the three big soil purchases I absolutely recommend all beginners to get because it's pretty straightforward and you can eyeball the mix and it's fairly inexpensive and will make your plants really happy. Now moving on to a ne the next big purchase that you should absolutely get when you have houseplants and that is fertilizer. There are 
are plenty of different fertilizers that you can get for your plants. I'm just gonna share what I've been using and what I really enjoy. First, we have Espoma's all-purpose plant food, and I find this to be a great first fertilizer because you can use it on like all of your plants pretty much. It's so versatile, and I really like Espoma as a brand. And yeah, I really recommend this fertilizer. It's a liquid fertilizer, so you just add it to your water when you're watering. It's organic and really easy to dilute because as I said, you just add it to water. So I find it to be a very gentle fertilizer with a lot of good stuff that is going to make your houseplants happy. If you're overwhelmed with fertilizer choices and you just want something that's going to get the job done for the majority of your plants, I absolutely recommend this. This is what I've been using and I like it. If you want to get a little bit more detailed, like you only have, you know, a certain kind of plant or you already have the all-purpose and you're ready to get a second fertilizer, I recommend the Orchid miracle Grows Orchid Spray for orchids if you have orchids, but I actually bought this for my Hoya because they have a lot of similarities to orchids, so it works really well to just miss them with this, and I've seen a lot of growth happen. And then of course, if you have a lot of succulents and cacti, you can get the succulent food. I use Mir Miracle Grow for these fertilizers, but there's tons of brands. Um, this is what I'm gonna have linked down below, but honestly, like, just find what you like, you know what I mean? And again, there's plenty of other fertilizers. Those are just like my beginner, fertilizers that I've really enjoyed. Next up we have the number one plant tool. I, let's just get to it, the moisture meter. You need a moisture meter. This is what it looks like. And there's different kinds of moisture meters. I have the two prong one. It measures pH, light, and moisture, but to be honest with you, I mostly use the moisture. I use this to tell when I have to water my plants basically every time I go ahead and water. And it is a great tool for beginners because if you don't want to rely on this your whole plant parenthood, you can at least use it in the beginning to start to see okay, like my plant is showing up dry on the moisture meter. What are the visual cues going on here that I can use next time to be able to tell that my plant is thirsty without relying on the moisture meter? So you can either use this forever, kind of like how I do, or you can use it in the beginning to kind of just get your footing in terms of understanding your plants and watering patterns. Some people don't like these because they say that it messes with the root balls. Um, I haven't had an issue with that. These are a little bit harder to get into like two and a half inch pots. That's when I kind of see an issue, but I have never had a problem with that. To each their own, but I really recommend moisture meters and it's helped me a lot in my plant journey. Okay, next let's talk about pest prevention and treatment. You wanna have this stuff on the ready, like you wanna have it stocked before you have an outbreak because the last thing you wanna worry about when you have an infestation is just like buying something. So with all that being said, I have three products because there's a, there's a lot of pest prevention products that you can buy. This is what I recommend. So first, let's start simple. I really love yellow sticky traps for fungus gnats and you can use them on thrips, but I've never had to do that. You just need these because fungus gnats are like one of the most common houseplant pests and they're so annoying and they reproduce very rapidly and nothing works like sticky traps. You can do the apple cider vinegar things, you can leave out little things of water, but I find these to be the most satisfying and fast acting. I have like, I think there's two different shapes in here. You can get like a little butterfly shape or you can use a little sun shape. So also very fun and it comes with a mini shovel. If the uh, fungus snap prevention didn't sell you, the mini shovel definitely will. These are also non-toxic, which is great because for some reason Meek, my dog, was really interested in these one day and he started biting on it. And I was very relieved to have a non-toxic brand because obviously I don't want my dog chewing on anything toxic and I have since learned my lesson and they are nowhere near him. <laughs> Next up on the pest list, we have neem oil, which is a classic. You've definitely heard of neem oil before. It This is a concentrate, and what I have linked down below is a concentrate, so make sure that if you are buying this specific bottle, 
the one linked down below, you are diluting it because you can buy a pre-diluted mix, but I find it to be more cost effective and customizable, I guess, when you buy the concentrate. So that's what I prefer, but you can also buy a pre-mixed bottle. Now, neem oil, here's the deal with neem oil, in my opinion. Everybody has a different opinion on neem oil, I've come to find out, which is very confusing when you are trying to learn about these kinds of products. But in my experience and what I've collected over time of watching Houseplant YouTube is that neem oil works as a fantastic leaf shine pest preventative. Preventative. <laughs> I would not use neem oil to treat a breakout, especially a severe breakout. So the way that I use neem oil is I mix it in a leaf cleaning solution, which I will link because I did a whole video on that. And I try to wipe my house plants down frequently with that solution, even though I'm kind of bad at it. That is just like a great way to drive pests away. So they're not gonna really be interested in your plant. Also, I could see this working for a very small outbreak. So for example, I have a plant and I find like two or three mealybugs on there and it's not really a big deal. I would probably go and clean off the mealybugs with hydrogen peroxide and then treat the plant with diluted neem oil. That's kind of how I would use neem oil to treat a plant. But overall, it's a very good preventative and it smells kind of gross, so just a warning to you if you're buying neem oil. The smell is disgusting. <laughs> the other reason I really like neem oil is because it has a lot of uses. It's an insecticide, so it kills a lot of pests, but it's also a fungicide and a miticide. So if you don't believe me, it's right here on the bottle. I have used this to treat not only minimal pest breakouts, but also if I'm seeing some kind of like funny fungal thing growing on a plant, I will treat the plant with this as well. It's a lot on neem oil kind of all over the place, but hopefully that gives you a better idea of how you can use neem oil because a lot of people talk about it um, as in different ways and it's very confusing. So I use it mostly as a preventative and a very light treatment. Now, let's say you have a very intense houseplant pest breakout. What do you do then? Well, my friend, you want to get Bonide 8. This is also a concentrate. Yes, this is a concentrate. Make sure you dilute this. I remember now. Basically, you take like a little bit. It's all in this little packet on the back of the bottle. I made about a gallon worth of treatment and then I poured some of that gallon into a spray bottle so I have it on hand whenever I need it. It's an insecticide and it is toxic. So this is more of a serious treatment and the thing is, I know a lot of people try to stay away from toxic treatments and try to stay super organic and natural, but when it comes to having a certain amount of houseplants, it's better to just, you know, kill the bugs and recover the plant from any harsh treatment. But having diluted this correctly, I actually didn't notice any damage to my plants after using it. Mealybugs, scales, spider mites, white flies, aphids, there you go. A whole bunch of different stuff that are really annoying and you wanna get rid of, this is what you need. But this will not work on fungal issues. This is an insecticide. So again, this also is a very powerful smell and since it's toxic, make sure that you keep anything that you're treating away from any pets or babies or whatever. The neem oil is more safe, but this absolutely keep away. This again is for when you're like, if you're making that face and you're yelling and cursing, use this product, this is what you need. I actually found out about that product from a De La Plants video, so thank you, Becca. Um, she doesn't watch my videos, but thank you. <laughs> you saved me. Now let's talk about a couple miscellaneous items that you may need if you have more than like five houseplants, probably. Number one, I really recommend you get different kinds of like sticks, I guess. So here we have a PVC pipe. This will not be linked down below just because it's a PVC pipe. <laughs> you can go to any big box store and get one. P things like PVC pipes, uh, chopsticks even, bamboo sticks, those are really great to have on deck whenever you have a plant that wants to start growing up 
or is maybe toppling over and you want to like bring it back vertical and it needs to kind of support system. I definitely recommend having some sort of solution to that ready. Along with that, the next product I'll talk about that I don't have with me because it completely unraveled and I just didn't want to deal with it to be honest with you. But it's kind of different ties. So once you kind of stake up that plant, you're going to want to tie it to the stake. Think about things like twine, uh, plant velcro tape, that thing that all of the YouTubers use, or just plastic coated wire. Those are just some basics that I find very helpful. Then, one of my favorite houseplant products to have is Svag. And this is all I have left because I just recently made that uh, moss pole video, so I used all of my Svag. But basically, if you don't know, this is what Svag is. The brand that I've linked down below is my favorite because they sell them in very like compacted blocks. So it makes it super easy to store in like limited storage spaces. And it's very clean. I don't see any twigs in there or bugs, which I have seen before. I think it's a very reputable, solid Sfag brand. And why do you need Sfag? There's a bunch of different reasons. <laughs> Basically, you can use it as a propagating medium. You can use it to grow plants in, honestly. You can use it to rehab plants in. You can use it for moss poles. There are so many different ways to use Sfag that I, even if you're a beginner, I know Sfag can be a little bit more intimidating. I definitely didn't rush to buy it but once you have it in your home you start finding all different kinds of ways to use it and plants really really love it honestly like it starts off experimental but now it's kind of like a staple in my houseplant supplies like i need it and last but not least we have very exciting nursery pots wow so this i'm not gonna have linked down below because you will probably Either you already have a lot of nursery pots or you will have a lot of nursery pots. First of all, I want to kind of just point out that you don't have to throw nursery pots away. It can be a huge waste of plastic if you're throw like this is a very small part of my nursery pot collection. I use them the most for number one, propagating. Number two, I have free pots, basically. Hello, terracotta shortage. And lastly, I really like nursery pots because they are the perfect pot to grow plants for friends in. Because terracotta is so short, it might be kind of hard to gift away a full terracotta pot with a saucer, but I have been growing plants and potting them up in nursery pots for friends because first of all, it's just like lighter and easier to transport around, but also, you know, you don't have to kiss goodbye to a terracotta pot. Okay, so that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please let me know if you have any staples that I didn't talk about. I'm probably gonna do like a household items as houseplant supplies video or whatever somewhere in the future. So subscribe if you want to see that. I hope you all have a lovely week. I will see you in my next video. Bye!